Okay, in this video I want to demonstrate how to generate our first toolpath, which is going to be a face mill operation to basically face mill the top of the stock. So I go to my toolpaths tab on the ribbon toolbar, and if I click on face mill here, I'm going to accept the default name. This then opens the chaining dialog box, um, which allows us to select various lines or chains to generate toolpaths. But at the moment, if I look at the, the prompt here, it's saying select OK to use the defined stock. So clicking OK here will use the defined boundary of the stock as opposed to me having to select which geometry I actually want to use for the face mill operation. So I'm just going to select OK to use the defined stock. OK, then working down through the list on here, I'm going to then select the tool. And at the moment, I have no tools in here, so I'm going to look for a library tool. And at the moment, the filter is active, and all I'm seeing are face mills that are inside in the library tool. Just to demonstrate that, at the moment, the filter is just looking for face mills. If I was to select all and go green tick, you can see then that I would see all 280 tools okay, um, that are in this current library that I'm using. So I'm just going to click the filter again and just select none and then select face mill and green tick. Okay, the face mill that we have set up on the machine is a 63 mil face mill, so I'm going to select that and then go green tick and OK. That's coming in as tool number 11, which is the correct tool number for our machine. Um, it's got the length offset and the diameter offset. So if we change the tool number, we should really change the length offset and diameter offset to match. So example, if this was tool number 20, length offset should be 20 and diameter offset 20. Um, here we can enter in our spindle speed and our feed rate. Um, my preference is always to use um, what we call the velocity of cutting or cutting speed as Mastercam is calling it here. And for that particular tool in this material is 300. So I'm going to enter in 300 here. And you'll notice the spindle speed then updates to suit. Likewise, the feed per tooth, often seen on websites as FZ, okay, is 0.1 for this particular cutter in the material that I'm machining. And you'll see again the feed rate calculates automatically on that. Um, I'm just going to double check my tool here. So I'm double clicking on the face mill on the list here. And that then opens up um, how I can define the face mill. So it's got a cutting diameter of 63 millimeters. Its overall diameter is 71 millimeters. Um, it's got a cutting length of 8 millimeters. And this angle is 43. So that's all good. And if I go to next, on here, um, we can see this is where our tool numbers and our length offset and diameter offset are set. But if I look at the number of flutes, the actual number of flutes in the cutter that we have on the machine is actually 7. So I'm going to update this to 7, um, and I'll just finish that. Okay, so again, what you might find is that when I've gone in here, this resets the cutting speed back to what the default is and the feed per tooth back. So I'm just going to put this back as 300, and the feed per tooth then is 0.1 of a millimetre. And you'll see now my feed rate was around 900, it's now up at 1060 millimetres per minute. My plunge rate is a little bit high, this would be the rate for plunging down in Z. Um, so I'm going to decrease that down to about 300. And uh, Normally I would never plunge anyway with a face mill, okay? I would approach it from the sides. Um, the final thing I will put in this window is I will put the comment in. So I want to put in the comment here, face mill top. Um, this comment will come out inside in the code at the beginning of the operation, um, indicating what's actually happening. So it's always a good idea to put a comment in so that when you're running the code on the machine, you can actually see what operation, what each operation actually is. Okay, we can also specify a holder, um, and here we could specify which type of holder that we're actually going to use. Um, for this operation, I'm not, not going to select a holder as such. 
Cut parameters then is the next tab down. And the way I suppose I look at cut parameters here at the moment is if you look at blue lines, Mastercam represents feeds as a blue line and yellow lines are rapids. So what's actually happening at this toolpath is it's coming over this way on a feed. It rapids up, rapids across, rapids down and then feeds across again. Okay, so that's a one-way style. Um, I'm going to just leave the defaults at the moment, except the one thing I'm going to change here is the stock to leave on the floors. I'm actually going to finish the floors, so um, I'm going to say that's zero. And when I press enter on the, on the keyboard, you'll see that so the little symbol changes, indicating that I've essentially finished the top surface of this profile. Depth of cuts. This is if I had a lot of material to take off the top of the block. I could say, well, the maximum rough step, just say for argument's sake, I had 20 millimeters of stock to take off the top. You might say, well, the max rough step that I can take with this material is five, and then Mastercam would calculate the number of cuts. In this case, I've only got half a mil to take off, so I'm just going to uncheck depth cuts. And what I want you to notice is over here, we get this little symbol here, which is saying the depth cuts essentially are not active. Okay, so working down the next tab here, I'm looking at my linking parameters. So while the cut parameters are what basically happens in X and Y, it's how the part is being cut in X and Y. Linking parameters are how the tool is moving in Z. Depth, you can see here, would be the final depth of the pocket. Um, top of stock is the top that currently of the material that's left on the stock a feed plane and a retract plane. Okay, I'm going to, because this is wireframe geometry and everything is drawn essentially on level zero, on Z zero, um, on the top plane of the job, I'm going to set all of these to absolute. Okay, and my depth I'm going to set to zero. So it's going to go down to Z zero. The top of the stock is 0.5, that's correct. My feed plane, I'm just again going to leave all of these as defaults at the moment, is 10 millimeters, and my retract plane is at 25 millimeters. Okay, and just for now then I'm going to green tick and accept that. And what Mastercam does, and I'll just zoom back out on here, it shows me a preview of the cuts. So again, what you should really get to note is that the rapids are shown in yellow and feeds are shown in blue. Um, so if I was to verify this, to check and see how this part has been machined, I can hit verify here. And this opens up a new window um, where we'll see the actual verification taking place. So if I play that particular toolpath, you'll see how that tool is being cut and it's been cut in four operations also you'll notice the time so here it's telling me how long it's taking me to machine this and one of the advantages of verification is just reset it again just to run it um, one of the advantages of verification is the speed at which it happens but it's also something that we need to be careful of, that when you're running it on a machine, we might be able to reduce the time. So I just want to have a look and see how can we reduce the time it takes to do this face mill operation. So as I said, it's nearly one minute, five seconds at the moment. So I'm going to close my verification down. So I need to edit this toolpath to see if I can make it any faster.